Welcome back to our videos of Data Engineering Zoom Camp and in this video we will continue with talking about Docker and SQL. In the previous video we saw how to package our ingestion script to Docker. So you saw how to use Docker, what are the commands here. So our Docker file ended up being a pretty small one, but at least you now get a feeling what uh, you can do with Docker and now we will take what we did in the previous lessons. In the previous lesson we ran Postgres and we ran pgadmin in one network using two Docker commands and you see there is a lot of configuration uh, here and this is not very convenient. Instead of that what we can do is we can specify one file, one YAML file with uh, configuration for this container and for this container and we can say that these containers they belong to the same network and then just run them without uh, doing all that. This makes things uh, a lot simpler. For that we actually will use a thing called docker compose. Docker compose is a utility. It, as I said, it allows to put uh, configuration for multiple containers in one file and then instead of typing a lot of things we would just do docker compose up. To install docker compose, so if you uh, yeah, so if you're on Mac or Windows, then you should already have Docker Compose because it comes as a part of Docker Desktop. For Linux, you need to download it. Yeah, so you need to basically follow these instructions. You just need to download this and put it to a folder in the path. Maybe I'll show you in another video how to do that. So I'm on Windows, I have Docker Desktop, so that's why I have Docker Compose. If I do that, it will it will output something. And uh, in this getting started guide, I think what I want to see is a configuration. Oh, yeah, so this is how configuration looks like. It specifies two things here, two services, web and radius. So we will need to do something similar. So I will add a Docker Compose. I will create a Docker Compose file docker-compose.yaml and then here we can specify the version if we want but we don't have to by default the oldest one will be used and then we need uh, services and we will have two services so one service will be pg database I'll add some information here uh, later the other service is pg admin so these two for pg database we need to specify the image so the image is this one postgre 13 postgres 13 then we need to specify the environment and in environment we will have all these things that we have here let me just copy them so i will copy them here we don't need this e thing and this is the format i don't think we need the quotes so now this is how we pass environment variables to our Postgres image. We also need to do volume mapping. For that we have a thing called volumes. And in volumes it shows how we should do this host path, container path, mode. So the host path is NY taxi. Oh, let me just copy it from here. Actually in Docker Compose we don't need to write the full path, which is good. Then the path on the container, let me again copy it from here. And then the mode, we don't have to specify this, but we can also say it's RV, means read write. I think this is the default one. And if we also want to access the, the port, uh, we need to say, I think, yeah, it's ports. And then again, the format is the same, host port, container port. So on the host it's 8080. No, sorry, it's 5432, and then we map it to the same port on the container. It should be like that. I think for volumes, um, probably it should also be a string like that. Okay, now let's do the same thing for PG admin. So we need to specify image, which is on this one. And by the way, you probably noticed that I have autocomplete. The reason I have autocomplete is because in my Visual Studio code I have an extension for Docker. Like you click here to install ex extensions and you can just type in Docker and then you will have an uh, extension from Microsoft for Docker. So then again we have environmental variables. For us we have two of them. We don't need uh, quotes. 
And then what else? We need a port as well. We probably also need volumes. I, uh, to be honest, I don't know where I should map to which location in PG Admin. So I will not uh, put the volume here right now. When it comes to port, we map port 8080 to port 80. Mm -hmm. And I think that's all we need to do here. So this thing will be the name of the service. So from PG Admin, we'll be able to access uh, Postgres using this name, PG Database. And then since we define them here in Docker Compose, they automatically become a part of the same network. So we also don't need to create a network and then uh, specify the network when we run Docker. When we do Docker run, it will happen automatically. Yeah, I think that's all we need to do. So now let me go to my terminal. I will first stop the container with Postgres. Then I will stop the container with pgadmin. What I will do next. Let me check if nothing is running in Docker. I do Docker PS, nothing is running. I do now Docker Compose and up. And now it will create all these things. So it will create both Postgres database and PG admin. Yeah, so we see that uh, the database is already ready. So it, uh, it's ready to accept connections and PG admin is also ready. So now we can go to our web browser. I will need to refresh it and use this uh, username and password. Unfortunately, I will need to configure a new one to create a new one. We don't do volume mapping here. And that's why I didn't say it didn't persist the state from the previous run to this run. Yeah, maybe if you know how to do this, you can uh, let us know in Slack how to persist this configuration for PG admin. But for now, I will just I will just fill it in again. So connection will be PG database, and then uh, username root, and then password root, and then we save it. So we see that we managed to successfully connect to our Postgres database, and then let's see. Yeah, we have this new Y taxi data, and then we have tables here, and we have our yellow taxi rights. Let me just look at the first hundred rows and this is the same data that we saw previously. I think I forgot to show you how to stop this thing. Yeah, you can do just Ctrl C. That's already sufficient. I know why there is error. So you can do Docker Compose down. And this is like a proper way of shutting it down. Then you can also run this in detached mode. So when we do minus D um, and detached mode here in this case means that we get the terminal back. So we can st still do things with our terminal and uh, without having to switch to any one. So this is convenient. Keeping multiple terminal windows is sometimes annoying. And then when we run it in the detached mode, we can shut it down by using this docker compose down command. Okay, now by now I think I covered everything I wanted with docker compose. You see, this is a convenient way of running multiple related services with just one config file. So we don't need to have this kilometer long run statements. Everything we need is in Docker Compose YAML file. And this is convenient for local experiments, for integration testing and so on. For now, we did all this preparation. We looked at Docker, we looked uh, at our data set. We ingested the data set to our database and we're finally ready to do some SQL, finally. So see you soon.